Hi, I'm attorney Bradford Fisher at the Amansky Law Firm. I've been asked to talk about one of our recently resolved cases. Uh, we'd recently resolved a case in which the client was accused of reckless driving and a death, which would be a vehicular homicide. So the allegation was that the client was speeding, going 83 or 84 miles an hour in the far right-hand lane, and the person that died made a left turn in front of him, and he hits the person turning left, and that person dies. And they claim that my client was racing, and therefore it's somehow reckless driving, and therefore it's a vehicular homicide. So two things jumped out at us on the case. The first one is, it's not reckless driving. Um, he's not going 89 or 83 miles an hour. We hired an accident reconstructionist of our own who came out with the person going about 63 miles an hour. Um, it's still speeding, but it's not dramatically higher than the speed limit or what traffic typically goes on that road. Second, the person that was turning left in front of my client was a drunk driver. And so he had turned left directly in front of my client. My client can't avoid the collision. No one could avoid the collision. And so that's why the accident occurred. Well, for somebody to argue vehicular homicide, they have to have caused the accident. If the accident's entirely the part of the person that died, fault of the person that died, then it's not vehicular homicide and it's not guilty. And that was the argument we took. So we went forward on this, we had everything ready to go, we were arguing back and forth with the prosecutor about whether or not the blood alcohol level of the person is admissible, and we did hearings on things like marital communication privilege, and that we can't use someone's statements to their spouse as evidence in the trial. We got right up to the trial, and about two weeks before the trial, the state reassessed the case and concluded that they didn't want to go forward, and they dismissed it. So the client was very happy, in a case that normally, if he had been convicted, he would have gotten at least eight or nine years under the sentencing guidelines minimum. Uh, instead, it was a outright victory for the client, which is the way it should have ended, and he was a free man.